Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our Wednesday webinar that's all about the Quick Pick Registration Module. We're having some wacky weather here in Kansas. Lindsay and I were just talking about that. It was summer yesterday, nearly 90 degrees, and winter today with snow flurries this morning. So we went from sandals to sweaters, just real quick like. Lindsay's joining us from Dallas where she to share all about the Quick Pick module. Her weather's much better than ours. She's a local expert in Quick Pick, and she does all of the testing and documentation for this module. And she's going to want to know what questions you have along the way, so drop those into the chat box for us. Uh, I am going to record this session, and you'll be able to get a link to the recording. It'll come in a follow-up email tomorrow, and then Lindsay will get the recording added to our webinar archives, too. So I think that's all the small talk we need to do. Lindsay, I'm turning over controls to you, and then I'm going to hit record and let's get this started well all yours let me get the record right. button here if i can find it and all of that well i'm not finding a record button here i am i'm already recording so i'm going to have all this mumble jumble to uh edit out here <laughs> shortly but Lindsay, we're all yours all right uh good afternoon i am hoping that everyone sees just the main slide and not the presenter view. Um, I never quite know what's going to happen with my monitor. So we are seeing uh, kind of the title slide of the presentation here. Awesome, That's awesome. We're cool. Seeing. Yay, technology works. I think <laughs> <out>. <laughs> well, um, yeah, good afternoon. Welcome to the uh, Quick Pig module overview. It has certainly come a long way uh, since we uh, started down this path on this uh, journey many years ago now. Um, we're going to cover, we're going to go through the basics today. We'll, you know, we'll just kind of talk about what it is. As far as installation, we're not going to have a whole, you know, classroom lecture on exactly what to do, but just so you kind of understand the, the moving, <laughs> many moving parts uh, to Quick Pick. And then we'll look at a couple of settings. Uh, really, any questions you have along the way, you know, just send them in the chat. Sharon will interrupt me. We'll deal with them that way. And then I'm going to show you a couple of examples. So, you know, some of the settings we can add, how it would look. I've got a couple of other folks' uh, quick pick pages pulled up so you can see things in, you know, in action. So let's uh, let's get started. What is quick pick? What is quick pick? The, uh, you know, what, what's the meaning of life, basically? Uh, it's an optional module. It simplifies the registration process. And that is, to me, I think the most important thing about Quick Pick. And it especially helps when you're going through high volume registration. Like we're opening registration June 1st and people are camped out like it's Black Friday outside of Best Buy starting May 29th, right? So this is, you're gonna have a ton of people on the site and we just wanna get them in, get their money, get them out not slow anything down. That, that is really the greatest thing with uh, Quick Pick. You um, organize things into groups. So if you're familiar with grouping codes in uh, what I will term regular or full or standard ACE web, it's the, the same idea over here on Quick Pick. Everything is on a single page. Everything is, you're not logging in, browsing courses, picking a course, adding to your cart, add more. It's everything it's it's just right there uh it was actually developed for membership programs so those of you with ollie stuff uh, that is really uh how this came about a, a way to get ollie um the ollie demographic onto a web page to enroll in courses in a, a very simple way and let's see a quick pick is a lot i told you it's, it's the meaning of life here we're going through a bunch of them you can set limits so it's a way of you know, letting people in, but also sort of filtering along the way. And, you know, again, everything is going to be one page. They can select it all before going to checkout. So what are some features? We, so Quick Pick supports main fees and optional fees now. That is a newer feature that was added. Coupon codes for the membership courses. So, you know, uh, this membership, you know, select the annual membership and save $10. Coupon codes, though, 
are again for membership courses only and we'll actually repeat that uh, <laughs> on a future slide. Uh, just the basic course information is displayed. So, you know, standard ACE web, <clears throat> excuse me, we get the course description and the code and the dates and, you know, location, instructor, all of these things. This is just going to give you basic title, course, time, fee, status, whether it's open or closed. You can hover the same way when we're looking at the uh, course listing schedule page in, in standard ACE web, and you can hover over a title to see information. Uh, that is also a feature on Quick Pick. So you're not just staring at a course code or a title and going, well, what is this about? You actually have the ability, uh, you know, on a, a laptop or a desktop to see that. And it's it's easier to, to make uh, revisions. So if you select your courses, proceed to checkout, and then it's just, you know, return to change your selection. So it's not as many steps. The The biggest feature is it doesn't, have as many steps. Also features, uh, you can have waitlisting that is allowed. And also donations, uh, we, we support those. So, you know, Ali programs typically, well, we all like accepting donations, right? And this is a, a way to make it a, a bit simpler. And also waivers. This, I think, is one of the brilliant parts of Quick Pick is you can have people sign an agreement, right? I consent to, you know, whatever, it's all right there and it won't let them move forward until that's happened. No more having to, you know, print out a piece of paper and mail it or have it at the first class and then hope that they all turn it in at the end. It's all going to be there for you on one page. Now, there are things that are not supported. Uh, I did mention before, coupons are supported for membership courses, but not individual courses. Right now, workshops are not supported, course packaging, uh, BOGO, or data capture pages. But with that, there are some ways to capture supplemental data as part of the uh, consent section. So it's not a data capture page proper, but if there's information that you might need to collect for you know, a name record or you know, the, the membership registration record, not any others, but the membership registration, we can work with you to, to get that information from folks. Any questions so far? No? Seeing? Nope, seeing just where to unmute button. How about that? <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> I mean, that's the unmute button, I think, was just the, the mute and the unmuted. It's been the. Um, the bane of everyone's existence, right, for the past two years. You're on mute, but I'm not. So <laughs> when we talk about installation, there are many files, okay? And your tech is going to be there with you every step of the way in this initial setup. The good news is, is once everything is in place and you've set up all your, your you know, preferences and you've configured it how you want, there's not a whole lot that you need to do afterward you know each term there are a few things that you'll need to change but for the most part it's there it's there it's done and that's a good thing because wow look at all those files that are involved uh, again your tech is going to help you uh, out of these the, the one that you, the two that you will most likely be uh, working with the most are the quick pick boxes dot text that really is <laughs> where the magic happens. So this is where you're saying, you know, here here are the membership courses we offer. Here are the course groups that we want on the page. And I'm going to show you this shortly. Uh, and that I and I is what determines things like the membership codes that are going to be allowed for the term or whether you want to allow proxy registration or not. So those are really the only two that you'll return to often. All right, so I said quick pick boxes dot text. Don't let it, uh, it, it looks a little overwhelming with all the curly brackets and the words and the numbers and all of that, but you know, basic, basic things to know here. The important parts of this quick pick boxes. One is saying, yes, it's true. Memberships are required. Setting your membership courses. So your you know, membership course code, 22 Ollie in this case and the member code. So both of those are going in quick pick boxes. And then the part 
after all of your membership stuff. And I'm also going to show you all of this in, in real time. So we'll look at this now and then we'll actually go and you know, mess with some, some live files. Uh, you, one of the things I think is pretty cool, so these course boxes is, is what they're called. Um, any grouping code you want in this, in this case, you know, it's quick pick, fall art or whatever it is, there's your grouping code. And then you get the ability just below that to put in the title. So you could reword it something entirely, a completely different description than what you um, have in that grouping code record. So, you know, that, that's there for you. Um, a couple other things to kind of gloss over here. Um, member flag, that's actually, we're not gonna gloss over, that's an important one. Uh, if a membership is required for this group of courses, that's where we put the membership code. You can have multiples. Um, we, we don't have Kathy here, but Johns Hopkins University has many memberships and you know, two types of members can take these courses, but only one can take these or you know, five those. So there's, there's some wiggle room. You can decide who, which, which sort of member can take uh, courses from, from each group. And you know, sometimes you have uh, you know, free information sessions or things like that. You can also just set it to not require a membership for that specific group. And again, I talked about the quick pick I and I. That's the other one that you would be kind of working with. The big deal again is making sure that the membership codes that are, you know, in um, in use for the term, right, are are in there for you. So if it's not there, it's not going to be anywhere else. Uh, donations. If you are going to include donations, there's that donation course where you would put the course code. And I didn't um, highlight it, but just above that, you'll see donation options. If you have more than one donation course, you can absolutely set that to, you know, however many options you need. Um, the main quick pick template will need a couple of things added, but again, we, there's a lot of setup on the back for a very, very simple, streamlined uh, customer experience. And then your cutoff and your last reg date, this is where we're making sure that, you know, if a membership expires before the term ends, that we're only going to let you enroll in the courses beginning you know, before it expires, or if you don't care about that, you just want it to go all the way out and just cut off on a certain date. So that's where we, we look at those. Uh, some of the other I and I settings, just kind of looking here at this image, you can configure some of the language on here. Uh, you know, if something's pending or if a course is full, you could have it say something, or if you're already registered. So, so you've, you've got some options as far as, as changing the text. Um, you know, when you're displaying the dates, you know, do you want it to say, you know, in this example, meets, or you might want it to say course dates and times. So, you know, think of this INI just the same as you would your ACE web INI when you're deciding the preferences there, or think of it just like your student manager preferences, you know, what sort of friendly labels do you want to see on things? And then there's the consent section. Uh, this is its own file, but again, once you set it up the first time, unless you change policies or something, you're not gonna have to go back in here. Uh, we provide just stock text on, on the file that you would install, but it, you can remove that entirely, keep it if you want, add more to it. Um, you know, it does, it is in HTML, so it does help to have a little bit of knowledge of that, um, but it's also very straightforward. So if we're looking at just paragraphs and you just wanna add those, you can. Uh, it's it's kind of what you make of it. So this, this is the basic quick pick page, okay? When, when you get there, Rather than with standard ACE web, you know, browsing through the courses, you can do on this page, but before you select anything, before stuff becomes active, you do have to log in. That's, that's the most important part. And once you do, then, if I get it to work, come back, come back. Once you've logged in, you'll get the selection boxes, you'll get your check boxes so that you can, okay, first I need to select a membership. So 
any of those groups where a membership is required, you're going to have to select one before you can get into the course selections. Uh, if there are groups where a membership isn't required, you can skip right down to that section and go from there. So, again, after logging in, you select your membership, courses become active. If there's a coupon, you know, that's, that's going to be there for you uh, when you select the membership. So again, coupons are only available for membership courses, not for individual courses. But um, that will also show up once the membership is selected. And I know this seems very brief, and that's okay, because I think for a lot of this, showing it, letting you see it in action is probably going to make a little more sense. So if there are questions, I will, we can go through those now. Otherwise, I'm going to jump over to a, a, a live example. Go ahead and jump over to that live example. All right. How do I want to do this? Let's see. All right. Here we go. Welcome to Quick Pick in all of its glory on my local demo. Hey, P.S., I'll just go ahead and add a plug. Don't forget warning messages and bulletins are whoops, now available in ACE Web. So if you've got questions about that, ask your tech, check the help guide. It's pretty fantastic. So basic layout of Quick Pick, right? We get our login section. We've got memberships. However many memberships you are offering, that's, that's what we'll show here. We go further down and we get our groups. So in mine, I've got you know just four groups set up. And the cool thing is, is they are just expandable. So we aren't sitting on the page waiting for everything to, to load. And also, it's just not all there staring us in the face right away. We can, you know, keep it a little, little condensed before we, we go into it. And if there are donations, the donation section is going to appear. You'll notice the waiver and code of conduct. There's nothing here yet. That's because I'm not logged in yet. So how did I get these, these groups? How did I get these memberships? That's a great question. So quickpickboxes.txt, again, this is the, the big, big deal one. This is where we set our membership. So if I have a course, right, my course code is 21 Ali Deal. That's what I have set up in Student Manager. And I'll even pop over there to get to it. Same rules apply here. You do have to have the, you know, an enrollment open date, just as with standard ACE web. You do need to make sure it's, you know, set to publish register, all of those things, or else it's not going to show up. But this is my membership code. I'm going to come back to this. Somebody remind me if I, if I don't get back to it. That's kind of a, a fun one. So that's actually not one I want to show you now. Let's, let's look at just 22 Ollie. Um, so, well, some of the things you can add in with your memberships, um, I'll just tell you about it now, show if. There's this, this great, these, these parameters you can put in. So maybe you don't want to just have this particular membership course displaying immediately on the page. You might want to hide it the same way that you can set courses to no publish register. That's the idea with this one. Um, another show if that you might include is you don't want this particular course to show if you're not registered in something. Uh, we had folks who, and, and, and in this case, you'll see, um, you know, supplemental membership idea, or, you know, you get to extend your membership if you are already enrolled in something. So maybe there would be a parameter here that says registered and put something in. Don't worry, you don't have to know all of these. We have a very extensive list. Again, your tech is gonna help you with it, depending on what you need. We will know what to add in for you. Uh, you know, if we look down here, you can, again, have a supplemental membership. We do support that. And you can require a certain membership code in order to choose that membership. So over here, you will see, you know, just Ali membership. And then there's this unlimited term fee one. And this is a contingent one. This is the supplemental membership. So if I were logged in, 
Oh, I think I can use this one. You will notice there's still not a checkbox here. And this is a contingent message. This is something over in the Quick Pick I and I where you can actually set what you wanted to say. But with supplementals, with the you know prerequisites, once I select the OLLI membership, you'll notice that we get a box over here. So I could select that now. So again, once we select our, our membership, then we get all these lovely check boxes, all these active boxes in the rest of the group. Unless they've already begun, in which case, you know, depending on when things expire, they may not actually, might not be able to enroll in them yet. Uh, again, in this section, uh, we do also have support for hybrid courses. So you can, you know, choose whether it's virtual or early bird. If it's full, if all the, you know, the physical seats have been filled, you're only going to be able to get that virtual one. So you know, especially with the last two years and, and everything we have learned and, and the way everything has changed, uh, you know, having support for hybrid courses on Quick is, is certainly a, a wonderful new feature. So, setting up our membership, and then we get our course boxes. And you will notice this message, you're limited to a maximum of courses. We added support for course and hour limits. So in the in the art group, you know, you, you may only want people to be able to select like five courses, right? Or two courses or something like that. There is in the quick pick boxes down here. So I set up my group using the grouping code art. I gave it a title. And then down here, course limit, that's where you can select, or that's where you can set. So I can only select two courses from, from that section. So that one, I've only got two in here anyway that I'm able to select. Uh, so if I were to change this, let's say to one, and come back and refresh, wait for it to load. Select one, when I do this, it will tell me you have already selected one course from this section. So it's a lovely little gate right there to make sure people are only you know, taking, taking their fair share of, of what, what's going on. We also allow hour limits. I'm not sure how many of you, uh, if you, enforce that sort of thing in your programs. Um, again, Johns Hopkins, I'm going to use them as the example. This was one of their uh, wish, wish list items. Uh, depending on the type of membership purchase, uh, they have courses that last an entire term, and they also have half-term courses. So, you know, a 24-hour course is the full one, let's say, and then two, you know, one in each half of the term is 12 each. So you can limit it by hours. You can either take, you know, whatever, three full term or whatever, what, six half term. So we, we have that limit there for you to use as well. Questions so far about what we can, can't do, maybe? I don't see any questions. No. Pop them in there, okay. folks, if you have any. Yeah, definitely do. Uh, the other thing is, Setting your, your membership flag, right? So if you have either membership code, we set the flag. So for our, our art group of courses, that grouping code, you can either have the OLLI membership code, which is coming in with the 22 OLLI, or if you add that fun little supplemental one, it will allow it there as well. Now, under writing, and that's not... Helpful because those weren't showing up for me very, very well, were they? Got nothing in here that it's actually letting me hit that limit. Um, if it's, you can set it to none if none are, if you don't need a member, if you don't require a membership. Let me try it in here as well. It should take that and we will see. Um, there is also an option. 
Yeah, there we go. So notice I don't have a membership selected yet, but I added in the financial management one that no membership is required. So you will see that, you know, I can select, well, any of them, right? Because the membership isn't there, but there is also a message where if you're a member, you get a better fee, right? You get, you get something nicer. What are some other fun things? User selectable, this is a newer one that works with the support for uh, multiple fees or optional fees. Um, for example, let's say we don't want folks to be able to choose for the hybrid courses or we don't want them to choose a fee. It's gonna be based on your membership, right? Then you could set that to false, so I can't select it. But obviously, if we're dealing with things where you have to choose your fee, or you know, if you, you wanna add additional fees here, for example, like a parking pass, right? You will also notice that if fees are mandatory, I'd set this one to mandatory on the course record. If you select your course, it's automatically gonna be chosen for you. So that's just added right to the cart. And oh, what do you mean by cart, Lindsay? I don't know. If we look at the top where we're used to seeing it, it's showing empty. But as you go through, select your membership, select any courses, you know, donations, all of that. So I'm gonna make a couple of donations. I'm feeling really generous, right? As we scroll through, everything is totaled for you at the bottom. But, even though I've selected things, if I try to proceed to the checkout, again, I am forced to sign this consent form because I have it configured to uh, you know, require it. So in here, anything that you need, you know, that, that you wanted in the text area. We do also, uh, some folks, you can require just a checkbox. You can require uh, that folks put their initials in there. Um, you can also, I think it's JMU. They have Quick Pick and they actually require a little bit more. Um, they set up groups, or not, not groups, like interest groups. I think that's actually sort of an OLLI thing where you can kind of select your interests. Um, as they go through, you'll notice down here, you know, the same checkbox that I have, but it does also want a name. And that's stored again as a registration user defined field. And then you can select, you know, whether it's media release, class directory. So again, we don't have supplemental data capture templates. We don't support those. We don't support any of this for an individual course that you select, but we can collect some information and tie it either to the membership registration record or the name record. Maybe we wanna go to checkout, we get over there. I already have things on my cart. This is what happens when you're uh, <laughs> using a demo. Uh, what we would see there, though, let me go back, back, I'll just take that out, okay, see if it yells at me again, it gives me an empty page, this is, <laughs> this is where we put the, like, you know, elevator music on, right, and I, I clear off the screen for a minute to try to figure out what I've done wrong. Uh, but you know what, and if all else fails, we do have this option to clear all selections. It's fantastic. And you can just go through, try it again. Now, when we're changing selections, uh, if we were to proceed, and hopefully it's not going to give me grief this time, let's find out. Come on, there we go. Uh, <laughs> once you proceed to checkout, you will notice that you have some options here. Kind of like when, when you're walking through standard ACE web and you have something on your cart and then you can either save and add more or enroll someone else, you do have the ability to go back and change your selection. Uh, you can clear everything. You could cancel and just log off and bail. Also, you've, you've seen this now on, on this screen as well as on the main quick pick page. We do offer support for proxy registration. 
you don't have to use it. I think more often than not, folks aren't using it. It's up to you. It's, it's something, it's there, it's, it's available. Now, if I change my selection, you will notice that the membership has already been selected. So when we're saying change selections, we're saying go back through and you know select your courses, okay? You can change things there. If you want to change the membership, for example, you know, Ollie membership, but if I add this unlimited, everything's cheaper, you do have to clear your cart and go through it again. Okay, and so then it'll just take you right back through. Showed you course limit, hours limit, no member hybrid. Ah, so I was saying before, remind me, and if I forget, which I did, um, you have some show if options, and one is this URL flag, okay? And in this case, it's for the 21 OLLI deal course. Say you want to offer the specific membership to you know, an, an inner circle, or hey, you were a member before, enroll in this special membership now, and it's at a cheaper fee or something like that. This parameter lets you set that, and it uses, I have to remember the actual parameter on it. Uh, if you set it to unhide, when you hit the page again, it will show up for you. So this is where we go to our handy dandy um, help guide over here. Any questions while I'm doing this and bouncing around everywhere? Or is it, does it all feel a little, a little much? Lots of things. Just soaking it all in right now. All right. Yeah, it is definitely a, a soaking in sort of situation. Oh, isn't it great when you know you have something and it's not showing up where you want it to be? So while I'm looking for that, what are, um, I, is there anything, I, I see a few of you on here who are using Quick Pick. Uh, any tips you might want to share with folks or, you know, what, what are some things in here that maybe we wish we, we still had or something you might want to see again? I'm waiting for Lynn to type something in right? to the power I know. user of this. <laughs> What'd we miss, Lynn? What's some tips that you might have? I'll tell you what. Instead of me trying to find it and wasting your time, what I will tell you so is... Lynn just says she loves it. <laughs> loves Quick Pick. Yay! And actually, we have Lynn to thank for this. Um, you know, Quick Pick yep. was really developed with Lynn in the very beginning, and it, it kind of took off from there. So uh, we we owe you a whole lot of thanks and and uh it's it's come a long way huh so it's always helpful i can show you lots of things on a demo but it's nice to see it in action with other other people right so again james madison university uh they use it theirs is a very straightforward just come in you get one membership they do offer a coupon code they i mean they're real generous you get a whole free first year membership uh, and then it's just basic, there are no limits. Uh, they set theirs up. Again, I was talking about grouping codes. You don't really have to use grouping codes, you know, as your, your course groups subject kind of things. You can, it, like they do, have different sessions, right? So it doesn't really matter what the topic is because we know we're offering four sessions, you know, trips, events, whatever, you can group them that way. Uh, let's go over to Johns Hopkins here. And JHU, I do wish Kathy were here, but that's okay. Again, they offer multiple memberships. You will also notice that they've set theirs up so everything is in just one, one column. Uh, and that is actually a quick pick boxes.txt option as well. Where is it? Come here, column count. You can set however many columns you want. Maybe you will have like 20 courses in each group and you want them to be in four columns. By all means, you can do that. I didn't mention, you can also change the course order. So 
you know, mine are by catalog code. Maybe you'd rather the order be by date. That's something you can configure. So again, we, you know, do have some things that you could enroll in if you're not a member. Uh, and there's, they have grouping codes set up by membership. So, you know, for them, their, their Baltimore membership, uh, I think Montgomery can basically do whatever they want. And so that's a membership added everywhere, but others are very limited to their specific uh, location. And they also, let me select this. So kind of, you know, data capture idea again, we don't offer it, but we do have some features. Again, they have a waiver. They are also collecting vaccination information. So that's something that we set up for their name record. Uh, so again, that's, that is something we, we can do. Uh, South Dakota also has Quick Pick. Again, I think theirs is also pretty, pretty straightforward um, based on it looks like location is how they're, they're setting it up. And, you know, again, you can change labels, right? So meets, I think I've got day of week and time. So these are some of the, the you know, sort of finer details where you can change language to what would work better for your audience. Uh, Lynn, you know what, we're over here singing your praises and I think I had yours pulled up before and accidentally closed that tab. So let's go check out what's going on at Boise, the OG original, how we set things up. The one thing that I haven't pointed out yet is, you know, you, you have the option of all of your ACE web header and footer information, everything there. But, you know, sometimes it's better to keep it pared down again to, to meet your audience where they are, to keep them where they need to be rather than let them go, you know, off into other pages and then come back. So, you know, you'll, you'll notice with Lend, it, it's very limited. You, you can get out of here just enough to, you know, maybe learn how to register or, look at your account or contact folks, but you don't have to let people go anywhere but this page if necessary. So again, we have our memberships and ah, we have, uh, again, the, the session idea uh, so that you, you choose sort of as you go. And special, ah, special interest groups, that, that's what JMU was doing with, I think, checking boxes as far as, you know, some of the stuff they were interested in versus actually setting groups. So, so Lynn, we're going to keep picking on you, but not really picking on. So it, it looks like rather than having interest codes for these, you've, you've set them up as, as courses for people to enroll in. So that's, that's a good way to, to do things. Did you add anything to your, uh, 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 might not be my password. We'll find out. Nope. Uh, the consent area, are we collecting anything? I don't know what my password is, but I think we have for Boise, the consent also adds the date to the uh, the waiver, unless that has changed and I don't know about it. So, really fun thing is if you wanted to go through and actually try it out on your own, we do have out on our Aceware University demo, you can go through when you land here under examples, we offer the quick pick module. We offer an example of that. So you can go through and sign in. You can create an account. Once you log in, you can select your membership, go through all the courses. We do have some uh, you know, notes in here, things you can add. The other thing, hopefully we are all using Manager Web. I know we're using Manager Web, right? Because it's brilliant and wonderful and fantastic. Surely, I thought you raised your hands for Lindsay if you are yeah. using Manager Web. <laughs> no one? I see no hands. I what? see no hands. No one's using Manager Web. And you might okay. just give a short little, what is manager? Oh, there, Lynn is. Lynn yeah. is using it. Thank you, Lynn. Yay. Okay, manager web is fantastic. I love it. It's the sort of thing that, like, 
I wished for for years when I was working at, you know, SMU and continuing it. It's a way for you as staff, as student manager users, to get in and do things that ordinarily would require you to be at your desk in front of student manager. So you can enroll students. You can enroll them. Uh, rather, you know, you, you maybe you're you have an event and somebody shows up at the door, even though everything you sent out says registration in advance is required, but inevitably someone's there. You can actually go through and look up a student or create a student account. So, you know, maybe I wanted to come in here. Uh, <laughs> Lindsay really doesn't know what she's doing most of the time. So let's go ahead and you know what? Forget it. I'm just I'm just gonna enroll for her. Basically what happens is you log on as this individual, no passwords are shared. Everything is still very, very secure, but you can walk through as the individual. So, you know, I'm in here as a staff member, but now I'm sort of logged on as, and you can't see me using, you know, heavy quotation marks over on this side. And you can you can enroll folks in courses. And one of the things you can do if you have Quick Pick, if you have Manager Web, or if you're using Manager Web, which we all should be, is Quick Pick registration is an option. So you log in as someone and you go through, welcome. It looks just like what a student would see. Go ahead, sign in, you know, enroll in all of it, whatever you need to do. So know that that access is there for you as well. Hey. You know what else is fun about Manager Web? I'll tell you what else is fun. You can look up rosters the same way instructors would. You can edit bulletins. What? That crazy banner at the top, the little you know, warning, the bulletin, you can edit them in Manager Web. You can't create new ones, but if you have them, if you have them in your system already, you can you know, activate. You could rename the text if you need to, especially you know, campus closed due to a snowstorm. A snowstorm in basically the middle of May in Kansas, not May, it's April, excuse me. Uh, you could come in here and change the date on it, whatever you want to do. Uh, maybe we don't need it anymore. We could unpublish. We go back. Yeah, it's, it's gone. So that is that is there for you. We actually moved it down here. So know that Quick Pick is a feature in this as well. Uh, let's see. I feel like I've given you the basics. You can decide if folks can select their fees or not. Uh, you can decide what you want the date field to be, if we can limit uh, how many fees to display. You can have as many memberships as necessary. You can hide memberships based on you know an exi existing code someone might have on their record, or you do have the you know no publish register similar feature with Quick Pick as you do in standard ACE web. I think you get a lot more control over groups than you might in, in just regular standard ACE web because you can rename things as necessary. You can you, you have a lot of uh, control over how things are being grouped. And I, I personally think that's a, a pretty fantastic feature here. Uh, let's see. I think that's most of what yeah. I wanted to cover. Um, Very good. Yeah. Very good. And it, you know, folks, you can try that out on the um, in the sandbox in the examples, and I'll send you a direct link in the follow-up email to try that out. You know, if you come up with other questions, you know where to get your answers. We hope that uh, obviously those that are using it enjoy it a lot. Lynn says it's really a positive impact on our programs and so hopefully some of you think about that if you want to give this a try let me know Lindsay do we have the next webinar um, we do for yes, our May we webinar yeah. our May webinar is on the 19th and we're going to be covering some of the solutions to some of the common registration problems that we see I'm querying the text now to say what things should we cover in this session and so I've got a good list of uh, things we'll talk about for for using for registration and um, with that hopefully we'll see some of your colleagues next week at our new user spring training and then we'll see some of you in May for this webinar and hopefully we will see all of you in June at conference
registrations open, they're coming in, you want to get that registration in as soon as possible. Not seeing any other questions, we will let, thank Lindsay for putting this together and telling us everything about Quick Pick. And we will see you soon at another ACEWARE event. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a great afternoon. Take care. Bye. Bye.